Hello there, ghouls and goblins. Today, we're going to be listening in to some key interviews with some of America's most deadly and deranged individuals. This is top five terrifying interviews with evil people. Let's dive on in. Let me know down below which one of these gruesome cases you find the most interesting. There's something to be learned from all of them, no matter how horrible they are. Number five. John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy is one of America's most infamous criminal cases. He's practically single-handedly responsible for traumatizing an entire generation into a fear of clowns. A vicious sadist and a remorseless criminal, hearing clips of him talk is deeply disturbing. In a series of interviews in 1992, Mr. Gacy offered a rare window into the mind of a lunatic. In the interviews, Gacy is adamant that he is innocent of his crimes and talks in a remarkably pleasant an almost affable way. He seems like an average Joe, a, a chatty old man that you would probably talk to at a park or something, until little cracks in the facade keep appearing and its darkness comes out. He appears to be talking himself in circles. At one point, it seems like he indirectly confesses to something he claimed that he hadn't, and when the interviewer presses him on it, he retracts like a child being caught in a lie, saying, I'm sorry if I led you to believe that. In the same interview, the reporter asks Gacy to show him the rope trick, the horrifying method of of strangulation Gacy would use on his victims by applying a tourniquet. Gacy obliges, but when the reporter hands him the string, he chuckles wryly and says, aren't you scared sitting next to me? Most chilling is when the subject changes to talk of his clowning. He seems like he genuinely loved it, and knowing the unspeakable acts he committed as a clown makes it all the more sinister. He talks about how to him, clowning was an act of regression. It allowed him to explore his inner child within. Deeply, deeply unsettling. Perhaps most upsetting though, is hearing Gacy talk about his anger towards his victim's family, saying they're overreacting. And you realize everything about the persona you've seen in the interviews is all just an act, just more makeup. My ghouls and goblins, if you're enjoying what we do on the channel and you wanna hear more true crime stories, then subscribe to Top 5 Scary. We've got stuff coming every day. Number four. The Night Stalker. Richard Ramirez terrorized Los Angeles for 14 months between 1984 and 1985. But perhaps you know him better under the sobriquet The Night Stalker. Maybe you saw the Netflix documentary that came out a bit recently. He was named that due to his propensity to seek into people's houses undetected and then carry out his sickening crimes. Eventually, he was caught after a facial sketch made newspaper front pages, leading to him being apprehended by an angry mob and arrested. He didn't see many interviews or too much direct media attention, but one that was filmed prior to his final sentencing showcases his twisted nature and the utter remorselessness of someone who was called the Night Stalker. While being asked about the nature of his crimes and the horrific dealings of them, Ramirez appears amused, smiling, almost holding back laughter. When asked outright about his motives, he smirks as if he's holding in a secret. It gets worse when he starts to wax poetic and philosophize about human nature. He chuckles a bit when asked if he thinks of himself as evil and says, we're all evil. He insists that what he did is no different than what governments do on a large scale. He claims saying he is merely a product of his time and that he was living in bloodthirsty times. Every word hangs in the air uncomfortably. He denies to answer if he feels emotions. He says he gave up on the feeling of love and happiness long before his crime spree started. But everything he says seems very fake and self-serving. The interviewer even notes this, saying, you do a very good job reading off the script, Richard. There's an appearance of gloating as he talks as well. He expresses that he felt he would be crushed by his own desires if he didn't act on them. And when asked if he's afraid, he says he doesn't care what happens to him, and he never did. Truly sombering. Number three, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy has fascinated people for years, due in large part to how well he was able to disguise himself and make himself appear normal. But underneath his carefully put together persona was one of the darkest, most truly vile criminals the United States had ever seen. Unlike most serial offenders, Bundy not only kept up appearances, but was well-groomed, charming, charismatic, and had a very compelling way with words able to manipulate people scarily efficiently. He came from a happy family, a good Christian household, and didn't seem to fit the usual bill for these sort of criminals. The last interview ever conducted with him highlights a lot of these traits. He appears very soft-spoken, speaking quietly and almost soothingly to the camera, doing his best to garner sympathy from the audience and the interviewer. He attempts to blame a lot of his violence, darkness, and misdeeds on an addiction to lewd content. When he's describing it, he almost sounds like a man trying to talk about kicking caffeine, saying, oh, I think I'd be a lot better without it. Not just for him, but for lots of other people. When he says that phrase, he 
pauses a bit and gives a dark, knowing look to the interviewer. He's even joking around a bit, playfully. He comes across as very intelligent, answering all of the questions thoughtfully. But everything about it just seems terrifying, especially knowing the grisly nature of the things he did. But it feels like you're listening to a mask talk. It helps you understand how he was able to commit so much of what he did the way you hear him talk. When asked directly if he thinks he deserves his punishment, he answers eloquently, saying he's afraid to die, but he feels that he deserves to be punished to the most extreme extent of the law, and that society will be better off without dangers like him. It is a frigid look into the mind of someone so twisted. Number 2. Dahmer Jeffrey Dahmer is infamous. The name immediately evokes horrible emotions. Perhaps you've seen one of the many movies based on his twisted crimes, but the truth is always scarier. In 1994, Jeffrey Dahmer would give his last interview before his final sentencing, speaking to Stone Phillips, a former NBC anchor. The interview featured his father Lionel present, who Dahmer did not share a close relationship with. Now the entire extended segment is harrowing. Dahmer is completely cold and calculating the entire time, speaking dryly with almost no emotion to anything he's saying. It's as fascinating as it is horrifying to hear him talk, to be honest. He remembers everything very clearly, and he describes it plainly, matter of fact, extremely sterilely. But there is a hint of remorse, almost regret over what he's done, but it is impossible to tell truly if it's genuine sincerity, or if it's all just a carefully manipulated act to appear sympathetic. Perhaps the most disturbing insight into Dahmer's brain is when he tells the reporter that he found the violent acts of his crimes distasteful, and said that it was all just a means to an end of his ultimate goal, which was having complete physical domination over someone else. He describes his crimes as not something I enjoyed doing, and then proceeds to explain his sinister desire to create living zombies by putting acid in brains, leaving people docile and helpless. Dahmer was known as well to keep trophies of his victims, calling into question if any of these statements rang true. He reiterates that he just wanted someone to keep under his complete control, a slave to his will. And number one, Charles Manson. Charles Manson may very well be the most notoriously well-known criminal in American history. He's definitely the most well-known cult leader. The cult leader led a string of violent attacks in 1969 to 1971 that would eventually culminate in his arrest and standing trial for his grievous crimes. Manson would spend the rest of his life in jail and occasionally entertained interviewers looking to shed light on the bizarre grisly story. Manson was charismatic in his own way, persuasive, outrageous, and most importantly commanding and controlling. But if you ever saw any of his interviews after his arrest, you'd be forgiven for not thinking that, since pretty much every time he opens his mouth, it's either to share his bleak, nihilistic worldview, or raving in a way that is just completely incomprehensible and is the gibbering of a madman. As soon as this one interview starts, he boasts that he doesn't feel guilty since he hasn't done anything he's ashamed of, and then pausing for a second and clarifying, I'm ashamed of not doing enough. From there, he then starts speaking complete gibberish, and then elaborating a bit on some of the conditions that made him this way. He talks about growing up without parents, which left him feeling like he was in a different dimension, saying that it's hard for him to think about things clearly, saying he hardly remembers breakfast. Watching Manson talk is a fascinating study. He almost seems fictional, a larger than life personality ripped out of a comic book film in it, but he's real. And the real darkness behind his eyes is a harrowing reminder of what can lie inside something. Most of the interviews with Manson are like this. Ravings, rantings, a stream of vile hatred and aggression, and a peek into the minds of one of the most twisted men to ever live. That's all for this video, my ghouls and goblins. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.